All right, we're back, and now we're in Good Egg Galaxy. Oh man, I, I always love that opening. I always get goosebumps every time I, you get you get that opening. Like just before you're about to land on the planet on a planetoid, that amazing music just just kicks off. I fucking love that. And speaking of the music, oh my god, the music in Super Mario Galaxy, it's the best in the franchise. You know, Galaxy One and Two respectively, obviously. You know, and again, you're not gonna tell me any different. And don't at me at that. They're, you're not going to convince me that any other Mario game soundtrack is better than Galaxy. You're not. You have beautiful orchestral music. You know, original music that's been remixed. You're not going to tell me otherwise. So, right off the bat, I'm going to go full, you know... So you may think I'm going full Sonic, you know, 06 here. Saying, oh, you're just going to... You're basically get, just going to get a hard-on for the music. You're damn right I am. I fucking love the music in this game. Yeah, so... Yeah, so obviously... One of our main gimmicks, obviously, uh, throughout this whole game, obviously, is collecting star chips just to get launch stars to appear so we can travel from planetoid to planetoid. Ah, motherfucker, I got hit by a piranha plant. Get the fuck out of here, piranha plant. How dare you get into Smash Brothers? <laughs> I had to throw that in there, obviously, and every time I see a piranha plant, I just want to take it out for taking a spot on Smash Brothers. Yeah, because at the time of this recording, I don't know who the hell the other DLC characters are. I don't follow that stuff, obviously, so you have to forgive me on that. Yeah, so obviously we got this giant piranha plant. Just throw, just use the spin attack, hit this uh, this thing, and then uh, proceed to the next level. And I love the level design in this game. You know, it's it's 3D level design done right. You know, I understand a lot of people like the shit all over Sonic Adventure 2. You know, when it comes to you know doing anti, you know, you know 3D environments in space wrong. But at least the first ones to attempt it, at least, so you can't fault him for that, where Nintendo got it right. Yeah, so right off the bat, yeah. We're already at the boss fight already, huh? Look how fast that was. Yeah, so obviously Dino Piranha Plant, obviously. All you gotta do is just spin attack its tail and ricochet it and make sure it hits its head. And obviously it's pissed off, obviously. So obviously we have to do that three more times. Not too difficult, obviously. It does have a pinch mode every time you hit it. It does get a little bit faster. So just so just run around. Just try to run in a circle pattern and it's never going to get you. Ugh. It can manipulate you like that. There you go. That's two hits. And one more should take it out, obviously. And that's it. Ah, poor... Poor bait, poor piranha plant is minding his own business, obviously. But hey, you have our reward, so you had to go. Uh, why do we always have to take out a, a piranha plant every time? From PD piranha to this piranha plant. That makes us F. Now I just feel bad. Alright, see you in a bit. All right, now we're in Good Egg Galaxy 2, obviously. Yeah, so obviously this this level right here, our main primary gimmick is collecting star bits. Yeah, I probably should have mentioned this in the first part, but... You know, like I said, ain't got time for that. Uh, at least in the first part, I couldn't explain that. And obviously, the game does explain that to you after you you get your first star, obviously. Then, uh, when you get to the, uh... 
uh, when you're when you're ready to enter the next area, obviously uh, the other Luma explains to you what star bits are, what do they do, what what's their primary purpose. Ugh, excuse that burp right there. Uh, yeah, a star bits' main primary purpose is uh, they're kind of like hard candy. And obviously, if you collect 50 star bits, you get a 1-up, as I just demonstrated right there. And, uh, star bits are fun to use, obviously. Uh, you can, you can actually shoot them as projectiles by, uh, where you see that little, where you see that little star bit, that little star, uh, marker right there, uh, where you flip, flicking the Wiimote. You actually use that to aim, uh, star bits, and you also use it, uh, towards pole stars, like we're demonstrated here. Yeah, so obviously, like, this game is basically tailor-made for the Nintendo Wii because, honest to God, I cannot, I cannot phantom a GameCube controller getting the mechanics of this game. I just don't. You know, like, like, ow, fuck, man, get the hell away from me, Goomba. There we go. Yeah, like, I honestly think this game is tailor-made for the Wii. It really is. You know, and at the time of this recording, you know, I heard rumors that the uh, NVIDIA Shield over in China had Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 for the NVIDIA Shield tablet and it runs great. I haven't heard why they haven't ported it over to the Switch yet here in the here in, in other regions. It's kind of odd. I mean, the Joy-Cons could work with, with it, obviously. Maybe not on portable mode because what would you use to uh, collect star bits? I don't know. It's kind of hard to understand. But me, I always love playing this game every, every now and then. Yes, yeah, so obviously we need one more star bit, obviously, because we need a hundred to feed that hungry Luma right there. Got a free one up. Yeah, you know, we need a hundred uh, specifically. <sighs> so basically, that was the whole gimmick. Obviously, we had to collect one hundred star bits just to feed this hungry Luma to get a, a planetoid to appear, so we could proceed through the rest of the level. And the one thing I do love about Mario Galaxy is the way they handle their secret stages. It's not fucking complicated. It's easy because every time you see a hungry Luma in any stage or even in the uh, in the Comet Observatory, that means it, it, it's leading toward, towards a secret star, and you take it. It's not fucking complicated. You don't need to look at a at a guide. Well, you well you could look at a guide if you want, but I'm just talking like you don't have. It's not complicated like Mario Sunshine. Like, where's the secret star? What episode is it on? You know, it's not fucking too linear. I hate that kind of shit. Yeah, so obviously here we gotta do a little bit of platform. I say fuck that, do a backflip spin jump. Oh god, I just love speedrunning this game. It's just so exciting. Doing a backflip and a spin to get extra height. And in my honest opinion, like if you're new to the Mario series, I would highly recommend you play Super Mario Galaxy first as your first 3D Mario game. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest, you will, you will hold no regrets, not only because the music is great, but the gameplay is not difficult, it's easy abilities back from Mario 64 minus the dive attack I never really liked the dive attack to, be, to begin with uh, honestly but thank god Mario has the long back thank god because Mario Sunshine why did you take the long jump away seriously I'm still waiting for an answer to this day it, it wasn't needed but then at the same time you could probably say well even with what flood you really can't long jump when you have flood attached to you that's like almost like a 30 pound backpack Eh, well, I can kind of understand that, but still, it's fucking bullshit. You know, even in the secret stages, but whatever. Yeah. Oh, let's, yeah, but enough of, of Sunshine. I don't ever want to talk about that fucking game again, especially for the shitty reward for getting 120 shines. It's not even worth talking about. This is Galaxy's moment to shine. Alright, we've already completed this area. Get in this launch door. And look at that! We just launched right through the glass, and Mario says, fuck this. That is so dope. I love that. Yeah, so obviously we gotta get these star chips in order to, uh, to get us to the star. We really don't need the star chips, you can just long jump to get it, but I was, eh, but I was a little lazy, I said fuck it. Why not, I might as well show it off. Plus, I love the music in this game, I really do. You know, this whole soundtrack is just so, it gives you an eargasm, if that makes any sense what I'm talking about. You know, and the soundtrack, you know, when it first came out, it was super expensive. And I'm not kidding you, go look at the prices of how much this... The soundtrack was before uh, it was posted on YouTube. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Ace.
All right, now we're on Good Egg Galaxy 3. Now we gotta take on basically the boss of this galaxy, King Caliente. All right, obviously, it's just. Yeah. Obviously, I'm just showing off this part right here because you're probably wondering, well, can you just do a triple jump and a spin attack to get to that launch star? Yeah, I could, but obviously, I wanna show off this part. And I love the pipe theme in here. Like, the pipe theme sounds so majestic, it's so beautiful. Like, you barely get to hear it. So right now, I'm showing it off, obviously. Plus, I get a free one-up, obviously. And right now, the and these notes play old-school Mario themes. Right now, I was playing the, uh, the pipe theme from Mario Brothers. There we go. Now, let's get back to... I just want to show off every t everything I can. You know, because this is a game I love to show off every and anything that's, that's warranted. Oh, Toad was in there. <laughs> Poor Toad. Yeah, so obviously, right here, it's basically showing us the mechanics of what we have to do against the boss. Yeah. Yeah, so King Caliente obviously is going to be our first uh, legitimate boss fight. And then we have Pokey here. Just throw this coconut at it, step on him, and get this launch door to appear. There we go. Ah, let those Goombas live. And eh, why not? I'm a nice guy. Yeah, I'm a nice guy. I mean, let's be honest. You know. I understand these Goombas are just doing their job, but oh well. And I love the fact that, you know, playing Mario Galaxy is a nice... It's a nice bit of fresh air, seeing traditional Mario enemies here, and some new ones, obviously. Oh yeah, you saw that? I love doing the triple jump into a spin attack. Oh, the fucker almost got hit by that bullet bill! Yeah, and if you get into a launch star while there's a bullet bill, actually, your spin attack overrides that, so you don't get hit. It's a fun tidbit. Alright, obviously, right here, now we're on the on the airship, obviously. And obviously, the music changes from transi transitioning. Like, it's telling you this game's not fucking around. When it, when it, with soundtrack, like, it, it, it shows emotion, it shows seriousness, so... Hey, this game, you know... This game doesn't fuck around when it comes to music, so... If you have a chance to listen to the soundtrack, please listen to it, you won't regret it. Uh, these enemies are new, I think. Uh, the Octoroks. And these are, these enemies are a pain in the ass, because... They shoot at you from a different angle, so... Try to be careful about that. Alright. Uh, let's take out the boss fight. Uh, yeah, King Caliente. Which is obviously a giant... It's basically a giant squid. Or a giant octopus, I don't know. You know, and obviously you're probably wondering, Oh, you're getting some flashbacks of Super Mario Odyssey from that boss fight in, uh... Uh, I forgot the name of that world. Uh, Bubble Mer- I don't know, it was, the, it was the beach world. I forgot the name. I haven't played Odyssey in a while. You know. I haven't played Odyssey in almost two months, obviously, because I already beat the whole game. You just get a little bored here and there. Most of the time, I just play a different save file. And so obviously, we're just reflecting coconuts right back at King Caliente. There we go. And he's already dead. Yeah, how about that throwing a coconut at him? So we went full Rowdy Rowdy Piper here when he threw the coconut at uh, Jimmy Snooka, <laughs> in a way. All right, let's get some star bits to go. Fuck it. And collecting a lot of these star bits is kind of mandatory because, like I said, uh, when you because we are gonna run into some hungry Lumas in the uh, Comet Observatory, which they hold some uh, uh, some secrets. All right, I'll join you then.